Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. Today I have come with the topic approach to delirium in emergency department. So let's see what is delirium, what are its causes and how to evaluate and manage in emergency department. So let's start. So by definition delirium is an acute fluctuating syndrome of altered attention, awareness and cognition precipitated by an underlying condition or events in a vulnerable person also known by terms altered mental status, acute confusional state sundowning, encephalopathy and acute organic brain syndrome. It develops over a short period and fluctuates during the day. Delirium is caused by an underlying medical condition classically considered reversible and is not better explained by another pre-existing, evolving or established neurocognitive disorder. Basically, there are two diagnostic challenges in assessing for delirium in emergency department. First is the clinician must be able to recognize if the patient has delirium and second is the patient needs to be evaluated for medical condition that has precipitated delirium. So let's see the types. Basically delirium has three types that is hyperactive delirium, hypoactive delirium and a mixed type. Hyperactive delirium. Hyperactive delirium is characterized by agitation, increased psychomotor activity and heightened level of arousal. Though less common than the hypoactive delirium, but it, but this is the most recognizable type seen in less than 10%. Hypoactive delirium, this is the most common type seen in approximately 90%. It is more likely to be missed by the clinician because patient may be somnolent, unlikely to draw attention to themselves. This has the highest mortality rate as it gets missed. Mixed delirium, it has alternating hyperactive and a hyperactive state. Next, coming to the causes of delirium. So, this is how it is easy to remember by the mnemonic delirium, wherein D stands for drugs and deficiencies. Drugs that cause delirium, I'll be discussing it later. Delirium can occur due to drugs and withdrawal of drugs as well and withdrawal of alcohol as well. Deficiencies is due to vitamin B12, thiamine and niacin deficiency. E stands for electrolyte imbalances like hyponatremia, hyponatremia, hypercalcemia, epilepsy, environmental factors like hypo and hyperthermia, endocrine causes due to hypo or hyperglycemia, hypo or hyperthyroid and adrenal insufficiencies. L stands for liver failure and low oxygen, low oxygen as seen in MI and pulmonary embolism or due to other reasons. I stands for infection wherein it can be due to sepsis, meningitis, encephalitis, CNS infection and abscess. R stands for retention where it can be urine or fecal. I stands for intracranial causes like hemorrhage, CVA, TIA, tumors and trauma. U stands for uremia. M stands for metals wherein we can think of lead and mercury poisoning. Delirium is mainly due to two added reasons. One is the predisposing factor and the other is the precipitating factor that has led to the present delirium. So coming to the predisposing factors, it can be due to comorbidities with the underlying liver disease, chronic renal failure, IHD, diabetes and other such conditions. Next is due to chronic alcoholism, chronic pain, age more than 65 and male gender are the predisposing factors. Coming to pre-morbid state like inactivity, poor functional status and social isolation. Geriatric syndromes like dementia, depression, malnutrition, polypharmacy, pressure ulcers and falls. Next coming to precipitating factors it can be due to acute insults like dehydration, fractures, hypoxia, infection, ischemia, drug induced, poor nutrition, shock, surgery, uncontrolled pain, urinary or stool retention. Environmental factors can be an add-on like sleep deprivation, ICU settings. Coming to drugs that cause delirium, these are the high risk drugs which have high propensity to cause delirium that is anticholinergics, antihistaminics, muscle relaxants, benzodiazepines, dopamine agonists and meperidin. Drugs that have low risk to cause delirium are few antibiotics like quinolones, isoniazid, linezolid, antimalarials, Others are antihypertensives, anticonvulsants, TCAs and sedatives. Next, coming to assessment of delirium in emergency department. The method used for delirium assessment includes CAM which stands for confusion assessment method. The components in this includes altered mental status or fluctuating course, inattention, disorganized thinking and altered level of consciousness. In emergency room, we have a two-step approach for delirium assessment wherein using a highly sensitive screening tool for delirium that is delirium triad screen can be performed rapidly to rule out delirium which just takes 10 to 20 seconds. This is a delirium triad 
screen which includes assessment of altered level of consciousness using RAS. If the RAS score is anything abnormal, then DTS is positive, that is delirium triad screen. And if the RAS is normal, then the patient is supposed to be assessed for inattention, wherein we can assess by asking the patient to spell the word lunch backward. If the patient makes one error, then DTS is positive. Further, we have to confirm delirium by using BCAM, that is brief confusion assessment method. If patient doesn't make any error, then the patient's DTS is negative and the patient doesn't have delirium. Next, coming to BCAM, that is Brief Confusion Assessment Method, that is used in emergency room, which takes around 2 minutes to perform. This test is highly specific. So, the first thing is the altered mental status. If the patient has an altered mental status, then further, patient must assess for inattention. If the patient doesn't have an altered mental status, then BCAM is negative. Further, coming to inattention, wherein we can ask the patient to name the months backward from December to July. If the patient makes no error or just one error then BCAM is negative. If the patient makes more than one error then patient must be assessed for altered level of consciousness by using RAS and if the RAS is abnormal then the patient's BCAM is positive and the patient has delirium. If the RAS score is normal then patient must be assessed for disorganized thinking wherein we have to ask few of the questions to patient like will a stone float on water? Are there fish in the sea? Does one pound weigh more than two pounds? Can you use a hammer to pound a nail? Hold up two fingers and ask the patient to demonstrate the same thing and if the patient makes no error in this then BCAM is negative. If the patient makes any error in this then BCAM is positive and delirium is present. Next, coming to evaluation, by starting with the history taking, it is critical to ascertain the patient's cognitive baseline. If the patient had a normal cognition, the recent sequence of events, any history of similar problems or prior episode of delirium, any added new medications or withdrawal of any medication, underlying comorbidity, if the patient had trauma, if the patient has any history of alcohol use or substance abuse. Next coming to examination wherein complete general physical examination including vital signs has to be assessed. Complete neurological examination to look for any focal deficit or any positive finding to look for foci of infection and or any drug patch over the body. Next coming to further laboratory evaluation wherein first and the most important one is to perform a blood glucose test to rule out hypo or hyperglycemia immediately. Next is serum electrolytes must be evaluated to look for electrolyte imbalances. Blood urea nitrogen creat must be checked to rule out uremic encephalopathy and transaminases liver function test has to be assessed completely to look for hepatic encephalopathy. A urine analysis must be done to check for foci of infection leading to sepsis. ABG must be performed to rule out hypercarbia and hypoxia. Drug levels that is serum drug concentration of psychoactive medications like lithium, anticonvulsants, theophylline, digoxin and aspirin must be checked. TSH must be performed to rule out hypo and hyperthyroidism. Lactates to rule out sepsis. Blood culture must be performed in case of sepsis. Lumbar puncture must be considered in case if there is no other foci found. ECG must be performed to rule out MI which can precipitate delirium. Test Chest x-ray must be performed if the patient is tachypneic or has any positive chest finding. So these are the lab investigations which must be considered. Apart from this, CT and MRI must be considered if the patient has any focal neurological deficit. Next, coming to the ADEPT tool, which is a reference tool for the emergency physician while managing and evaluating for delirium, which includes A stands for assess, D for diagnose, E for evaluate, P for prevent and T for treat. Coming to assessment, perform a thorough evaluation evaluation to determine the underlying cause. As I told previously, history, medication review and a collateral information are crucial. Perform a thorough physical examination for assessment of cause of delirium. Diagnosis, we have to screen for delirium in any agitated or confused older patient. Screen for underlying ma major neurocognitive disorder that is dementia. E stands for evaluate. Perform a thorough focused medical workup for agitation and confusion as I told previously. Coming to prevention, individual patient measures must be taken to prevent or manage delirium wherein we have to take care of pain, hypoxia, 
address nausea, vomiting, constipation, which can lead to delirium. And we have to avoid medication that can precipitate delirium. Coming to hospital and system-based measures to prevent and manage delirium. We have to provide a large font clock or other visual cues about the date and location can help self-orientation. We can limit unnecessary disruptions if possible, like unnecessary monitors or BP cuff if not required can be avoided. These factors can precipitate delirium. Next coming to treatment which we will be discussing now. So the initial management in emergency department mainly we aim for stabilizing airway breathing circulation along with C-spine stabilization indicated. IV access must be placed. Cardiac monitoring must be done. We have to look for reversible causes that can be addressed that is pain, hypoxia, infection, electrolyte imbalances, poor nutrition, constipation, dehydration and lack of sleep. These factors must be addressed initially. Coming to non-pharmacological interventions such as verbal de-escalation, distraction and reassurance can be used with assistance from family members and staff. Successful de-escalation helps the patient regain control without need for further treatment. Physical restraints should be avoided because because they can lead to injury and if non-pharmacological interventions fail then patient must be treated with chemical restraints. In that case using a chemical restraint our goal is to basically sedate and calm the patient and side by treat the patient's underlying cause. The agent of choice depends on mitigating side effects and the patient's underlying comorbidity. Coming to the drugs that can be used as a chemical restraint, generally a patient with a hyperactive delirium needs a pharmacological treatment. Antipsychotics are the first line treatment in that case, wherein using drugs like prasidone, olanzapine and haloperidol can be used in the given doses here. While using an antipsychotic, ECG must be monitored as antipsychotics can cause QTC prolongation. The most preferred medication is haloperidol, which can be used in a dose of 1 to 2 mg, preferred, preferably given intramuscular. Haloperidol has a higher risk of extrapyramidal symptoms than the atypical antipsychotics. While using ziprasidone and olanzapine, caution must be taken in case of heart failure or cardiac disease or in case of intoxicated patients or volume depleted patients. Benzodiazepines must be avoided as they cause prolonged sedation, paradoxic agitation or worsening of delirium. In case of alcohol withdrawal, benzodiazepines can be considered along with thiamine. Benzodiazepines must not be stopped abruptly. Few data suggest the use of combination of an antipsychotic and a benzodiazepine improves the clinical effectiveness that is shorter duration of delirium less extrapyramidal side effect next is melatonin melatonin has also been implicated in etiopathogenesis of delirium hence remelteon was considered for the treatment of delirium coming to selective alpha 2 receptor agonist that is dexmeditomidin which also has been found to be beneficial in treatment of delirium in ICU. Next coming to ECT, use of ECT is recommended only in cases wherein delirium is associated with neuroleptic malignant syndrome or to patients who have not responded to the pharmacological agents. So these are the drugs used in treatment of delirium. Coming to disposition, all patients with delirium requires admission and close monitoring from emergency department. Discharge is indicated only if the patient uh, symptoms are resolved in ED or has a mild symptom with the close monitoring with the family members at home. So hope this was useful. Thank you.